chapter 6, verses 10 to 20, it talks about the armor of God and how it can protect us from Satan's attacks. But today I want us to focus on Ephesians 6, 16, where it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one. So the shield of faith seems to be the most important. And from the shield of faith, we can understand that our faith is what shields us against Satan's attacks. So we're going to be talking about that today. And also, wherewith you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one. We'll also be talking about that today. So, let's get started. Now, for, as, as to help you understand the shield of faith better, here is an example. In history, Hannibal was a very successful war leader. He very successfully fought against the Romans. You see, Hannibal and his men developed this oddly bent short sword that was straight with a curve at the top. This sword was designed so that it could pierce through a Roman's shield. So now, when the Romans found out about this, they said, hey, we'll double the thickness of our shields. That way, Hannibal and his men won't be able to pierce them. But there was one exception. Hannibal had a, built a very good reputation for being good at very skilled at archery. So, when Hannibal found out that the Romans had doubled the thickness of their wooden shields, he decided that, hey, I'm going to introduce these Romans to some flaming arrows and see how they like that. So, on the battlefield, what happens when your wooden shield gets stuck, struck by a flaming arrow? You cannot come out from behind the shield to extinguish that fire, or else you will very likely die. So, when the Roman shield, wooden shields got hit by these flaming arrows, it caused a fire, which in military, caused, especially at sea, it causes uh, division of the ranks, mass confusion, and fear. So now, when the Romans noticed that Hannibal was shooting these flaming arrows at them, and they were losing because of that, the Romans started sh soaking their shields in water so that they would not be so flammable. So the Romans had to continually soak their shields in water. It is the same way with us, with our faith. We have to continually renew our faith as the Romans continually had to soak their shields in water so that we can quench those flaming darts of Satan. Now also, when we talk about flaming darts, do you really think Satan is just throwing darts at us? You know, most people think when they think about darts, they think about a fair park setting when they have a wall with balloons stapled to it and they hand some kids some little tiny darts and they say, okay, you can throw the darts and they throw the darts at the balloons and they kind of, and you kind of get this feeling like they're having this little ping, ping, ping motion. Not too damaging. I, Satan has a whole lot more than just darts in his arsenal. We have to understand that. Satan isn't just throwing little darts at us most of the time. He's more, he has a whole lot more advanced weaponry in it. You think he might have like some JK-47s, some tanks, some planes, maybe an aircraft carrier or an atomic bomb? Satan is out to get us and we have to understand that. He's not just throwing the little darts at us like most people think. He means business. Now, and to prove it to you that Hollywood has now um, change their rules to where a PG-13 movie can drop the F-bomb more than one time for one character. So there's going to be a lot more F-bombs dropping. Satan is dropping bombs on us. Also, we can compare this, this to uh, Psalms 147 and verse 4. It says, like arrows, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. So now an arrow, what do we get out of an arrow? Well, you see, an arrow always goes where it's pointed. Also, an arrow will stick, most of the time, stick into its target. It's the same way with children. See, as parents, it is our job to carve our arrows straight and sturdy and we must and they must be durable. 
So after it requires a lot of work, and it's the parent's job to carve that point at the end of the arrow so that it will be very sharp, so that it will stick into its target and it will stay there. So after they have they carve the point and they make it straight and sturdy, sturdy, durable, and then there's the feathers at the end of the arrow. The feathers represent the good and the bad role models in your child's life. They help direct that arrow. Uh, and it's ideal to have at least three and at least three bad, three good and at least three bad role models in your child's life because the bad role models are good because they help explain the why not to your child. Why shouldn't I do this? They will see that what happens because what will happen if they do do those bad things because they'll see what happened to the other person who did that and it's also to have good role models in their life so that they will be encouraged to be more like them and they will try to follow after them in a good way and then there is the parents job and it's that, that, that little wedge at the top of the arrow that little wedge is where the marksman puts the arrow into the bow now, as parents it is your job to make sure that that arrow is safely fastened into the bow which would be a good bow to use would be the Bible and you have to understand that that, that, that mark between the, the drawback and the release is the time between your child being born and the time your child reaches adulthood during that time you want to pull that arrow back as far as you can get it and then you want to aim that arrow at exactly what you want it to hit and then when the proper time comes you must release that arrow and if you did your job correctly that arrow will hit its target and not only hit its target but seek, seek deeply into the target and stay there and that's what you want as a parent but you also so parents where are you pointing your arrows and what do you want them to stick into because your children are in Satan's sights and parents you must be aware that your faith is the only thing that is going to shield your children from Satan's fiery darts and your straight your faith has to be strong enough to not only stop the dart but to also extinguish the flames so you have to renew that faith from time to time as the Romans put the water on the shields from time to time so that brings us to the question what is faith and how do I get faith well in Hebrews 1 11, 1, it says now faith is the substance of the things hoped for the evidence of the things not seen so then you might ask well how do I get faith and that's found in Romans 10 17 it says now faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God which is of course the Bible if you want faith you're gonna to have to read the Bible you have to read the Bible for yourself because in 1 Corinthians 1 25 it says for the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men that is why we have to read it for ourselves that's the only way to get that faith that shield so if you go by this and not by man You'll be on the right track, and you will get to heaven if you believe it, obey it, and then live it. The Bible.